give him glory, give him honor, and give him adoration. Bless the King of kings, bless the Lord of lords. Bless the ancient of days, magnify him. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. It's worthy, it's worthy, it's worthy, it's worthy to be praised, it's worthy to be adored, it's worthy to be magnified. Praise him, worship him, magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Worship the ancient of days. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We just want to bless you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to be magnified. There's no one like you. We bless you, Daddy. We bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Ancient of this. Glory be to your name. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I want you to lift your voice to him loud and clear and say, Father, By the time this convention is over, let my hallelujah be the loudest. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Almighty God. The all sufficient God. The one who can do what no man else can do. Please, by the time this convention is over, let my hallelujah be the loudest. Let my hallelujah be the loudest. Let my hallelujah be the loudest. By the time this convention is over, O oh Lord, let my hallelujah be the loudest. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you Glory. 
villages past, our hope for years to come. The God of past conventions, the God of this convention, the one who chose for us the theme of Hallelujah, the one who had already prophesied into our lives that we will have cause to praise him. We worship you. King of kings and Lord of lords, ancient of days, the Alpha and the Omega, the unchangeable changer, the Almighty himself. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration, we give you praise, we shout hallelujah to you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. All we are asking for, Lord, for all of us who are here, for those who, because of distance, can't come. By the time this convention is over, here and in every home, let the hallelujah be very, very sharp. Let the shouts of hallelujah rain the whole earth. And for those of us who are here today, those who are listening on the internet, on television, by radio, Father, I pray that the shouts of hallelujah will begin. And that the shouts of hallelujah will never end. During this convention, Father, do what we have never done before. Save souls like never before. Heal like never before. Set free like never before. Bless like never before. Father, I'm praying that even before the sun rises tomorrow, let every one of us here begin to sing a new song. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let like somebody shout hallelujah. To help you shout the hallelujah very well. As at 6 p.m. this evening, the number of babies born is already 26. Sixteen boys and ten girls. May I hear another shout of hallelujah? Shake hands with two or three people and tell them it's going to be glorious during this convention. And that you may please be seated. Now for those of you who have put down your names for testimonies, we'll begin to take testimonies as from tomorrow. But because several people just arrived today, they need to settle down. We want to be brief this first night. As from tomorrow, we'll be more settled in and we'll have time for more things. 
in the same manner we will leave the issue of sanitation till tomorrow as from tomorrow will begin to tell us those who are cleanest and those who are not so clean but let me encourage you straight away do everything possible to keep this camp clean everywhere you find any form of rubbish don't leave the assignment to the sanitation squad alone. The people in the sanitation squad are volunteers. They are not paid. They are people like you and I. They just made up their mind they would do everything to keep the camp of God clean. Join them voluntarily. Everywhere you find any trash, pick it up and throw it into the trash um, bins. And as you do so, every trash in your life, the Almighty God will remove it in Jesus' name. You're welcome once again in Jesus' name. It's so good to see you. And if the Lord tarries, I will see you again next year. Tonight, I want to talk to you for a few minutes, very few minutes, on entering God's gates. Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5. He start by saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And for those who may wonder, why are we so noisy? Why are we demonstrating so much joy? He says in verse 2, he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. If you came here with sorrow, that sorrow will end tonight. <laughs> know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That alone calls for a shout of hallelujah. <laughs> and then he says in verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Those who want to enter the gates of the Lord tonight, let me hear you shout hallelujah. The purpose of gates and doors is to restrict access. Purpose of gates is to keep those who are in, in, and those who are out, out. The purpose of gate is to limit the number of people who can come in. Because it means there are treasures within. For example, 
In the story of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible tells us that ten virgins went to meet the Lord because he tried as the bridegroom, because he tarried, they all slept. By the time they heard the sound that the bridegroom was coming, and they woke up, they discovered that the oil has gone low in their lamps. You know the story. The wise one who had extra oil pour more oil into their lamp and the flame kept on burning. Those who had no extra oil went to buy. By the time they were gone, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready entered with him and the door was shut. Oh, let me start by saying to somebody here today, the door of joy will not be shut against you. When the five foolish virgins came back, they knocked at the door. The bridegroom said, who is knocking? Oh, we are the virgins who have been waiting for you. Oh, he said, sorry. Those who are mine are already in. Once the door is shut, those who are in are in. Those who are out are out. The purpose of gates is to restrict access. To be able to enter into the presence of God, one way or the other, the gates must be open. And if it is not opened, there's very little anybody can say about those who are out. Now, there are gates leading to heaven. In Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10, Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10, you hear that even when the King of Glory wants to come in, the gates are to be commanded to lift up their heads. The everlasting doors are to be lifted up. There are gates. Talking about the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, in Revelation 21, verse 10 to 13, Revelation 21, 10 to 13, the Bible tells us there are 12 gates there, 12. And when there are gates, it means precious things are inside, precious things. If only you can get in, there'll be precious things to be had. Forgive me for using this illustration, but there are no houses with gates in Ajegunle or Moshe. And my people there in Moshe, I'm not saying this one derogatorily, I used to live with you. Our houses are no gates. What's anybody coming to steal? But when you go to Ikoi, when you go to VI, you will hardly find a house without 
a gate. Why? There are treasures within. And I'll give only one illustration tonight because of time. In Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. News spread that Jesus was in the house. And please let me assure you, <laughs> Jesus is in the redemption camp right now. Four men brought a man. And the man had problems. He was sick. Not just sick, but incurable. He was paralyzed from neck downwards. So you can imagine how poor he must have been. Because he could not do any work. You can imagine how stagnant he had been for years. No promotion. You can imagine how sad he must have been. You can imagine how barren he must have been. He couldn't even walk, talk less of Mary. This man had a load of problems. But he knew something deep within him said, if I can only get in into the presence of Jesus, if I can penetrate through, I know things will change. When he came and the crowd won't allow entrance through the door, and there was no entrance through the window, you know what he did? They climbed to the roof, they broke the roof, they entered in. Oh, tell your neighbor, whatever is going to cost you, Enter the presence of God this time. By the time Jesus finished with him, sickness was gone. Sorrow was gone. He ceased to be a burden to others. His shame had gone. If you were there that day, that man must be going home shouting. I am believing God with all my heart. From the moment he gave me the theme for this convention, last year, August, I've been looking forward to this week, believing him that all who will come to this convention, all, all, not some, all, we go home shouting. him and that's why the first talk is entering his gates I have been believing him that it will not be on the last day that the shouting will begin it will be on the first day I don't want
want to take your time tonight. But you probably have heard me say it before. We will come to a program, congress, convention, special Holy Ghost service, any program. And we will see multitudes healed. And I will go up to my prayer room. And probably on the way I see somebody who is not completely healed. And I fall on my face. And I say, Daddy, I thank you. I thank you for what you are doing. I thank you for all the mighty things you have done. But I still saw somebody. Why is that fellow not healed? Because it can't be because he hasn't got faith. Because he came here because he had faith. You are my daddy. Tell me what's, what's wrong. And he will tell you, my son, it's just to show you that you are not God. The point I'm making is this time it's not me at all now. It's him. You are not coming because of me. You are coming because of him. And if it is him there is no limit to what he can do. If only you can enter into his gate, you will come out shouting. <laughs> Somehow, if that gate can be opened to you, if somehow you are able to sneak in, It will not matter what you, th what your neighbors think. It will not even matter what your pastor may think. It it's not even going to matter your own faith. Why? He said in Isaiah 43 verse 13. Isaiah 43 verse 13. He said, I will walk. Who can hinder? When the Almighty God decides to be Himself, nobody, and I mean nobody, can stop Him. When that man was brought into His presence, and Jesus turned to him and said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. The church leaders, the congregation, everybody there, they began to grumble. Who is this man thinking he can forgive sins? The man on the floor was not interested in the argument. He was only interested in going home whole. And because he got into his presence, he was not disappointed. I prophesy to somebody here today, even before you go to bed tonight, you enter into his presence. Now, he, he, he says something. And I, uh, I will soon be closing because I, I want you to do practical tonight. Not, not much theory. It, it, it says in Psalm 118 verse 19. Psalm 118 verse 19. It says, Open to me the gates of righteousness. And I will go in and praise the Lord. You can't go in unless they open the gate to you. 
But there is a way of getting them to open the gate. We'll be talking more about this later on, maybe tomorrow. But I've told some of you before, some at least those of you who are old. I said, I am sure I will make it to heaven. When I said that, they look at me and say, ah, why are you so proud? Why are you so sure? I said, ah, I know what I will do. I know if, and God forbid, if for any reason whatsoever, I get to heaven and I found that I was locked out, I know what I will do to get in. They say, what? I say I won't complain. I will just stand out there and begin to praise God. I will stand out there and begin to say, I know you are the King of Kings. I know you are the Lord of Lords. I know your mercy endured forever. I know when you open, no man can shut. I know you are the unchangeable changer. I... Very soon, he will say, who locked out that boy? Bring him here. Because over there, people are always praising God. How many of you will enter in tonight? How many of you will get into his presence this very, very first night? Let me hear you shout another hallelujah. For just two minutes before we begin to do what will get us to enter. Let me remind you of what that passage said again, Psalm 118, verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. Only the righteous ones will be allowed to come in. Because in there, there's holiness. The one you want to enter into his presence is a holy God. That is why the blood of his son must first of all wash you clean before you can get in there. Even if he sent for you and said, bring him in, you still have to be cleansed. I wish I had the time. But you know the story. When Pharaoh sent for Joseph, it was Pharaoh who was in trouble, and he had that Joseph can help him. When Pharaoh sent for Joseph, before they took Joseph from the prison to his presence, he has to bathe, he had to shave, he had to look presentable. <laughs> The blood of Jesus must wash you first before you can enter. It is very, very essential. So for two minutes, those of you who have not yet been washed in the blood of the Lamb, those of you who are not sure of your salvation, and you know that without being told, you know this is a convention different from any other and you don't want to miss any of the blessings. I'm going to count from 1 to 15 because I can see the auditorium is already full. Before I say 15, come and stand before me. Let me pray for your salvation tonight and then you can join us in doing what must be done to enter into his presence. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you better run now. That blood must wash you clean first before you can appear before the Almighty God. 
Now I'm counting. One. Just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Fourteen. Those of you who have already come and those of you who are still on the way, talk to the Almighty God, please save my soul. Wash me clean with that precious blood. Wash away my sins, Lord. Make me as white as snow. Give me a brand new beginning, Almighty God. I want to be a child of God. I want to be able to enter into the presence of God, my Father. Go ahead, talk to him now. And please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. That the one who saved our own souls will save their souls also. That the same blood that washed away our sins will wash away their own sins also. Let's intercede for them. 
those of you on the way just keep coming keep coming don't stop I know you are coming from afar but keep coming keep coming and pray as you come Jesus save my soul let your blood wash away my sins make me clean make me absolutely clean Lord wash me make me as white as snow so that I can enter into your presence I want to be able to enter into your presence Lord I want to be able to enter into your presence oh thank you Father Thank you, Savior. Glory be to God. Keep coming, keep coming. I'm waiting for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still waiting for you. So keep moving, keep moving. Thank you, Almighty. Just make sure you get up before I finish praying. And cry unto him as you come. Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Wash me clean with your blood. Make me as white as snow. I want to be able to enter into the presence of God. Please let your blood wash me clean tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, we just want to bless your name. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for your precious blood that has never lost its power. We want to thank you for these people who have come forward tonight saying, Oh Lord, we want to be clean. We want your blood to wash us clean. As they have come, Father, receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls in Jesus' name. Let your blood wipe away their sins. Make them as white as snow. Make them brand new creatures. from now on, my Father and my God, grant them access into your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout your own hallelujah. Now, of course, the counselors, I believe, will be around. They will give you pieces of paper where you write down some information. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I need to know your names, your address, 
and your prayer request. So you fill the card, return to the counselors, and I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Now the rest of us. Tonight, nobody's going to stop you once you will begin to pray now. You pray till you are satisfied. It's up to you. You will know when you have entered into his presence. But I tell you a story. Quietly, please, those of you in front. I went to Abuja for the first Holy Ghost service we ever had there. I was staying in a room there in the hotel we were going to use. And I was bombarding heaven with my prayer request. Father, please do marvelous things. Heal the sick. Uh, save souls. Etc. Etc. Then I heard God say, Son, shut up. Do this for me. Do that for me. Am I your servant? All I've done for you, when have you thanked me for them? And he said, for the next three days, do nothing other than thank me. It was hard, but I tried. At the end of the three days, he spoke again. He said, son, go home. Get the elders to begin to teach the doctrines of the church, to strengthen the foundation. He said, because all you have seen thus far is addition, you are now about to see multiplication. And somebody here tonight, this night is going to mark the turning point in your life. That was the beginning of what you are seeing now. So tonight I'm going to ask you in your own interest. I want you to go before God just with thanksgiving. Just thank him. Magnify his holy name. Think of all he has done for you. Think of them one by one. Thank him for keeping you even to see this day. Thank him for life. Thank him that you can even speak. Thank him that you can even come. Just magnify his holy name. If you do it properly, very soon you will feel it that you are already in his presence. Once you enter his gate with hands given, the rest will be easy. So if you want to stand, stand on your feet and begin to praise him. If you want to go on your knees, go on your knees and begin to praise him. If you want to lie on your face, lie on your face and begin to praise him. Praise him until the gates are opened unto you. And then enter into his presence, thanking him, praising him. You yourself will know, even before tomorrow morning, that the turning point has come at last. So go ahead, begin to praise him. Begin to magnify his holy name. Begin to give him glory and give him honor and give him adoration. Thank him for all he's done for you. Thank him for life. Thank him for health. Thank him for strength. Thank you for provision. Thank you for protection. Thank him for every blessing. Thank him. Count your blessings one by one. And you will see what God has already done. Thank him. Praise him. Until he open the gate unto you. And you can enter in. Go ahead. Bless the name of the Lord.